we're getting ready to start wrapping the perm. So I showed you um, earlier that I was sectioning the, um, the wig just to make sure that I have full control over everything that I'm doing. So I've already dropped out the bottom section, this middle section here. So I have one, two, three, four, and five. I kind of split up, split, uh, split the front up. Um, because I know I'm gonna have to do something a little bit different up there. Um, this section right here in the top is a little bit larger, but I'll probably make it a little smaller as I move up and start wrapping. But you always wanna make sure that with your curvature perm, you're gonna start at the back bottom nape section, okay? So it's already been um, detangled and we're ready to go. So I don't wanna make sure I forget to remind you guys about using cotton around the outer perimeter before you put on your perm solution. And then also a couple of plastic caps because I am using different size rods, the cap that is in um, this box is not going to fit. So let me go ahead and open this up and show you what this actually looks like. And again, this is K-Pack by Joyco, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what this actually looks like on the inside, like what's in here. And make sure you follow manufacturer's instructions. I've been doing this for so, for so long, I just know what to do. Excuse me. So um, the first thing that's gonna be in here is your waving lotion, okay? Um, your neutralizer, and also your activator, okay? So this activator and the waving lotion, once you mix these two together, then it makes the perm solution active, okay? So you always wanna just make sure that you follow um, manufacturer's instructions with that. It comes with a plastic cap. Oops. <laughs> it comes with a plastic cap. And they normally are like a square shape, which I may still use this, but I know I'm gonna need some of these. And I wanna also make sure I catch all the solution from dripping because um, it is gonna drip while it sits and waits the, for the time a lot that it says that it's supposed to be for, and this one is gonna be for 20 minutes, okay? So this does come on the inside. And then again, if you were to open this whole box, um, you, and I don't wanna open it because I wanna do something with it, um, you're gonna follow all the manufacturer's instructions which is, which is written on the inside of the box. You will also need some scissors to cut the tips off in order for you to uh, squirt on the solution and get it fully saturated and get a nice even flow, okay? So first things first, I'm going to get my end papers. And with your end papers, I, use, I do a little trick. I just take my comb and you just wanna twist, 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 twist twist, twist like that until it separates all the papers for you so they're easy for you to pick up one by one or you can get you a little um, box for the, the papers that they have one that kind of like allows it to be like a pop-up top. You can do something like that as well. Either way, you're good. You wanna make sure you keep your water bottle handy because as you're wrapping, you're gonna need to keep the hair um, somewhat wet. It doesn't have to be fully saturated, but it needs to be somewhat wet so that you can um, wrap all the hairs in the rods, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm probably gonna speed this up and do a lot of this like um, off camera and then come back in once I'm halfway done. I may even speed this up just so y'all can kind of see me wrapping. But I'm gonna show you guys real quick. I'm gonna start back here, like I said, in this back section. So I'm gonna take about a inch section, about an inch. And she's still pretty wet, so I don't have to wet her. And I wanna make sure that I take my end paper and I'm gonna do what's called book in. Book in is when you fold it in half. So I'm gonna do book in and I'm gonna pull it all the way out. And I'm gonna go all the way to the end and you can spray a little um, water on it. Ooh, what are we doing, what are we doing? There we go. <laughs> this is just to dampen it and it's still spraying. I like, I love that spray bottle cause it just keeps misting for you. And now you want to take your rod and you wanna go all the way, pull all the way to the end of the end paper and the hair and you wanna start wrapping, okay? So why am I wrapping this vertical versus horizontal? Is because I want the curls to have a drop effect, almost like a spiral curl. 
you don't have to do it like that you can do it horizontal but like I said I want to have a nice flow and I want this hair to be bouncing and moving and swinging and I want those curls to drop because this is something that I know that my client wants but you can gauge it depending on your client so I'm going to be doing this wrap for probably it's going to take me about a good 20 minutes to do so I'm going to do the rest of this off camera and I'm going to come back on and let you guys see what um, I look like halfway through and then when I get ready to switch off to using the other rods I'm going to show you what that looks like as well okay so be back in a Okay, so I wanted to show you guys how to wrap um, by using these type rods, which are the same diameter as these purple ones and these blue ones. So if you're ever in a situation where you are trying to do a perm wrap and you run out of rods, just make sure you find a rod that has the same diameter of the curl pattern that you are trying to change the texture to. So I'm gonna show you, because this hair is so long, um, how I use the piggybacking technique to uh, wrap the last part of the section, which is right here in the top. So what you wanna do is you wanna take your rod and you wanna come about, I would say one, one and a half inches um, away from the scalp. You wanna bring your rod in, you wanna wrap, start wrapping until you can get it close to the scalp while you're wrapping make sure that you are also wrapping the bottom half so you're like doing two things at one time basically you're wrapping two parts of the hair at one time and so it should look just like that and now i'm going to come in with my end paper And I'm going to wrap the ends all the way up to this point. All the way up to the end of the first rod. Okay, so that's what that's going to look like. And because I want these curls to um, drop like almost like a spiral curl, um, is the reason why I want those to hang like that. And because the hair is so long, I could have wrapped this all the way from the bottom all the way down, but then it would be too tight and it wouldn't give me the same pattern as, um, the purple or the purple or the blue, um, type of flexi rod. Cause remember we want these curls to be like a drop curl, like a spiral curl. So you just want to always make sure you keep the ends of the hair nice and damp, the hair nice and damp not wet but damp and i'm gonna do these last two sections so as you can see that this last section right here in the front that's gonna be too big so i'm gonna actually split that in half just like that and i'm gonna do the same thing these are my last two rods okay do the same exact thing Boom, just like that. And you want to make sure that you are not um, wrapping them too tight. And you'll know if it's too tight, if it doesn't have that little mobile spring back action. The reason why you want to leave them a little bit loose is because when we add the perm solution, the perm solution, the, the ammonium thioglycolate <laughs> is going to make the hair soften and swell. So the hair is going to expand and then when we put the neutralizer on it, it's going to tighten and harden into that um, new texturized curl pattern, okay? So again, you wanna make sure you get those ends in there so you don't have what's called fish hooks. And I'm gonna bring this all the way down. Just like so. Okay, so I have one more to go. So you wanna make sure you always comb out your section. That way you get rid of any tangles. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing. Wrapping at the base first. 
Okay, wrapping at the base first. Just like that. And you can kind of twist the band so it's not tight. Like I said, just kind of twist it. Because if you have that band too tight, you will cause breakage. And that is not what we are here for. Okay? All right, so now that we're here, we're done wrapping. We are now going to apply our um, perm solution in a second. But first things first, we want to make sure that we wrap the outer perimeter because, again, once we put this liquid perm solution on, it's going to end up dripping down on all the rods. And you don't want to have this huge mess all over the place and also on your canvas. As you can see, my canvas is a little bit um, wet right here in the front. That's just from me spraying, but I have a plastic cap on the canvas as well. You don't have to use a canvas. You can actually use a um, foam head as well. That's probably what I should have used, but I already put it on here and I was not taking it off. That's probably what I should use because it's a chemical. Um, but I have a way that I clean these cork heads as well, so it's all good. So we're gonna get ready to um, put our cotton on, mix our solution, and we're gonna start uh, add, adding our perm solution to our wig. I don't know why I just got tongue tied, but it's all good. So we are getting ready to add <laughs> our perm solution to our perm wrap. Are you guys ready to change this texture? Let's get it in. Okay guys, so before we put on our perm solution, like I said, we wanna make sure that we put cotton all the way around the outer perimeter. I'm also gonna use something called a backwards bib. Um, I got these from a company called Framar. Framar, thank you very much for sending me these. Um, so yeah, I'll make sure I add the links down in the sh description so you guys can find these, but these are called backwards bibs. You can use them not only for perms, but you can use them for color. They're mostly used for color, especially with long hair, um, but you can also use them for basically any chemical service. So I'm gonna tie this around because I'm going to make a huge mess all over my floor. So I just want to make sure I'm taking all precautions here. You guys can't see um, underneath the bottom, but I actually got some plastic down here. So yeah, so this is just gonna kinda catch anything that drips, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take our Weyman solution and take that top off there. And we're gonna take the activator. So waving solution, doo -doo, hopefully you guys can see, and the activator, okay? Waving lotion, waving solution, activator. And we're gonna mix these two together. Once we mix these two together, it's gonna call, it's gonna call. I can't talk today. It's gonna cause a chemical reaction that's really, really stinky. So it's gonna make your whole house, room, area, salon, wherever you are doing this at, really stinky. Okay, so I'm gonna put the top back on here. Remember, we are using uh, K-Pack Waves by Joyco. Okay, and I'll put the links down in the description as well for you guys. And what we're gonna do is not shake this up and down, but we're gonna actually just turn it. Why? Because we are causing a chemical reaction with these two chemicals that we just mixed. And we don't want this to like bust in our hands. And also on top of that, this can get a little warm on the inside because remember, this is a chemical reaction. I don't know why my lips are sticking to my lipstick, but y'all gonna have to just bear with me today. And so you wanna take your scissor and just cut off the top of the nozzle. This is actually a really small scissor, so I'm actually gonna stick this in here just to make sure that it's opened up on the inside. And then we're gonna start applying, oh, I can feel the bottle getting warm. We're gonna apply our waving lotion, perm solution. Uh, we're gonna start at the bottom and we're gonna work our way up to the top. And then once we're done, we're going to put our plastic cap on and we're gonna let this process for 20 to 25 minutes. Remember to follow the manufacturer's instructions so you do not destroy your hair, so you do not destroy your wig, okay? I need y'all to think about this, like this is real hair on a real client, even though we know that this is a wig on a um, mannequin head, all right? So I'm gonna apply this, this is gonna take me a little bit of time, so I'm gonna go ahead and just speed this video up so you guys can continue to see what happens at the end.
Okay guys, so when it comes to saturation, you wanna make sure that you're getting your rod fully saturated. So that means you gotta, you have to roll the rod up and apply your solution. Make sure you're getting underneath and on top, okay? We don't have time for no mistakes. So on top and underneath, on both sides of the rod, okay? All the rods have to be fully saturated with perm solution. So as you guys notice, you see me going in here, spraying, just make sure my nozzle is spraying on top and on the bottom, fully saturated. So whatever you see dripping, that's absolutely fine. You just wanna make sure that you are getting it on every single piece of hair. Okay? So again, I told you this is gonna soften and swell. This is gonna have to sit on for 20 minutes. I just wanna make sure I have everything totally saturated. So I'm just gonna go back through and make sure I didn't miss any rods all the way down to the roots. So go back through and just make sure you got every rod. And you'll know that you got every rod because it'll look a little shiny. So that'll let you know that I got the solution on the rod. Okay, so we're gonna let this process for 20 minutes and then we are gonna check with in between time, I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna check a rod or two and see how it's looking. Okay, so we're gonna process and then I'll let y'all see how that looks when we get ready to check the rods. All right, so now that the solution has sit on for 20 minutes, um, we're gonna now check the rods, okay? So I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to, let me pick a little one a little bit closer to the top so y'all can see it. And I'm gonna unroll it gently and I'm gonna check the curl pattern. So I'm gonna push it up and down just to kind of see is it giving me the curl pattern that I'm looking for. I think that could use a little bit more time so I don't know if you guys can actually see it, but it's not, the curl pattern is not as strong as I want it to be. So I'm gonna give it a few more minutes. The top isn't ready, but let me check the bottom because this is where I start applying first. So it's a possibility that the bottom is ready in the middle section. I said top middle section and the top is definitely not ready yet. So I'm gonna check the bottom. Let's check the bottom because I'm gonna have to start, might have to start rinsing the bottom first. So, let's see, what are we looking like here? Okay, we working with something, we working with something. Let's see, do I like what I'm seeing here? So you can kind of unroll it just to kind of see if you like it. I feel like it just still needs a little bit more time. So we're gonna ride her back up gently. You just have to make sure that whatever you're doing, just make sure that it's gently done because what you don't want to do is cause too much tension on the hair as it's trying to form its new curl pattern. And I'm gonna check another one. I'm gonna check that one. Well, I checked that one, so I'm gonna check another one. So let me check one down here at the bottom. Let's roll that out. I'm gonna take my two thumbs and I'm gonna push in and see if I'm getting that curl pattern and that separation that I'm looking for. And it looks like it could still use a little bit more time, guys. Still use a little bit more time. Okay, so I'm gonna let it process a little bit longer. Put all these bags back on. That's the only thing about doing perms is trying to get all the hair, I think I put the wrong one on. Trying to get all the hair up in these bags. It definitely needs the bags because 
it's going to produce its own heat. Because, again, we mix chemicals together, right? All right, so we're just going to kind of get this bag back on. Okay. And nine times out of ten, I'm probably going to rinse this off camera. So you guys will end up seeing the finished result after we give this 10, min 10 more minutes. And then, not 10 more minutes, a few more minutes. And then we're going to rinse. Okay, guys, so let me show you what happens when you are rinsing. This is some real life situational type stuff that happens. And this is one of the things I hate about doing perms, but at the end of the day, when it's done, it is so, 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 so pretty. So um, what you have to do at this point is towel blot. So you have to really come in here after rinsing it out really well and squeeze and towel blot all of the rods and try your best to get out, out as much water as you possibly can. That way it does not impede your neutralizer, okay? So I'm just kind of, you know, going through towel blotting as best as I possibly can. And sometimes when you are doing this, you'll find that some of the hair has unraveled. That's okay, just fix them. Like don't, don't think that it's still not gonna do what it's supposed to do, it will, it'll still curl. Um, just try to take your, your hands and kind of just go back in and uh, resituate the hair, like kind of like rewind it around the rod if some of the hairs come loose. That happens with real people too. So not just on, um, you know, a wig, I'm doing this on a wig, but that's real life. Like that is what happens. So like if you guys can see some of these pieces right here, they have come unloose a little bit. You can take, after you squeeze the water out, you can just take an end paper, just like this, and just wrap it around it. Just wrap it around it and it'll be just fine like don't get in a tizzy about it those things happen why because the hair has now softened and swelled around the um around the rods I think one of my rods actually fell out on that side so I'm actually I'm gonna go in and put that rod back in so it'll still curl so you just have to make sure that you squeeze as much as you can of the water out of the rods. Now, when we put our neutralizing solution on, it's also going to sit on for five minutes, okay? So my neutralization process timing is going to be five minutes. So we're going to go in here and just try to squeeze as much water as we can out of these rods again you're not gonna get all the water out so don't stress yourself out now you see my towels kind of like turning color that's only because this wig was previously colored remember she was colored with a uh, permanent color that's the reason why i chose the perm that i chose because it's a mild perm it's still going to give me the body and everything um that i'm looking for so I'm gonna go back in and just kind of wrap this back around. So you might be thinking, well, if it came off, does it does that mean it's not gonna be curly? No, it's still gonna be curly. What's gonna happen is in the neutralization process, um, the curl pattern is going to stay in the hair. So the neutralization allows the curl pattern to stick and to stay because those bonds are now gonna be held together by this neutralizing um, solution. And that's the whole purpose of that. That's why you want to try to get out as much water as you can because you don't want anything to impede uh, your solution from doing what it needs to do. We need that curl pattern to be hardened into the hair. So it's not going to make the hair hard, but it's going to uh, make that curl pattern stick and be defined. So I'm going to take an end paper here and I'm just going to wrap it around the end of this rod because I feel like the hair is trying to slide out and that happens that happens that definitely happens if you see any little pieces you just kind of try to bring them back in and then just readjust 
your rod. So I think I have one more over here that's also kind of like unwinding. So I'm just gonna wind it back around and I'm gonna, again, take an end paper. I don't know how my end papers got wet, but they did. Take my end paper and I'm gonna stick it on just like that. Wrap it around and all I gotta do is press it and it'll stick back on there, okay? So look, I got another one right here and I'm still kinda, I still feel like these are like really wet. So I'm gonna come back in here, readjust my rod. So look for those ones that are kinda loose. And I'm gonna wrap that hair back around, just like that. And again, put on another end paper. And because these end papers are what is considered translucent, um, it will not impede the, um, I'm gonna just spray a little water on it. Um, it will not impede the neutralizing solution, okay? So again, just trying to get this water out as much as I can. And guys, don't look for this to be perfect because it's just, it just is what it is. It's just not going to be perfect and it's okay. It is okay. And make sure you just kind of use your fingers. Don't like use a comb or anything like that to try to comb the hairs back in place. Just use your fingers. Okay? Just like that. And I'm probably gonna add one more end paper on here. This is why you need a whole box of end papers because you just never know what you're gonna need. Okay? So I just want to just kind of go through and look at them because you can kind of tell which ones are trying to come apart. This is not an easy process. This is why in the salon, what I would charge for this service is probably about 100 to $150. Um, and the reason why is because the time that it takes to uh, prep the hair, to wrap the hair, and also to um, follow the procedures properly without rushing it and making sure that, um, you know, we're doing everything the way that it's supposed to be done. And that takes skill and it takes time. And it takes, you know, being professional and doing things in a proper manner, following the manufacturer's instructions. So, you know, a lot of times people have issues with pricing and they don't understand what it takes to do what it is that we do as licensed professionals. So when talking to your clients in your consultation, you wanna be crystal clear with them what they're getting, like the detailed work of what it's gonna take for you to do what it is that you're going to do and make them understand that this is a premium priced service, like this is not cheap what you're getting done. So they need to have a clear understanding of that before deciding to move forward with the service. That way nobody's caught off guard with the price. It is what it is. Now, when it comes to your wig clients, um, cause I'm also speaking for those services on wigs and as well as your clients, you just let them know what it is. I mean, it is what it is. We are reformulating the curl pattern of your wig. So this is the cost. And most of the time, people don't have a problem with costs when you explain what it is that you're having to do. Because at the end of the day, they know they can't do it. They're not licensed. They don't know anything about it. A lot of times, people get to the point where they just be like, okay, well, you're the professional, so, you know, it is what it is. And you just go from there. And you just kind of gauge the service. Like, I know um, when I start mentioning price to certain people, I already know they're going to change their mind good. Because what you're not going to do <laughs> is take advantage of my skills and my services that I'm providing for you. So, you know, I don't price gouge people. I don't go up on my prices when I feel like it because somebody's sitting in my chair and they just like, you know, what it is. So now, I mean, I took the $50 cost to now up to $100 cost. I feel like that is extremely unprofessional. So whatever your pricing structure is, have it at, at starting out at. 
you know, because things do change. And depending on the texture of hair you're using, depending on the client, depending on whatever it is that you're doing, sometimes in the middle of the process, things change and you have to make um, extra. Look at these curls, guys. Guys, do you guys see these curls? They are popping. So what I did was I went on and removed the rise after rinsing and putting my neutralizer on for five minutes. That's what the manufacturer's instructions said. And I removed all the rods gently. And now I'm gonna take the excess neutralizing solution and I'm gonna just run it through. And I'm gonna let that sit for five more minutes. And then I'm gonna rinse. And then I'm gonna come back and apply some leave-in conditioner and probably some styling products and let her basically air dry and then you guys will see the finished results so i'm just going in here and i just want to make sure that it's nice and saturated just like that you just go in and just spray the excess get these ends real good and just kind of like scrunch it into the hair, so to speak. Don't play around with it too much though. Okay, so that's all of that. So I'm just gonna make sure that all the perm solution, I mean, not perm solution, neutralizer. I'm still stuck on the perm solution, y'all forgive me. The neutralizer is in there. And if you can tell this whole front section, and I told you guys, remember I said I wanted them to be like drop curls in the front because I knew I had the longer um, flexi rods in the back. So it gave me just what I needed to happen. So you guys can see this almost like spiral curls now. Okay, so I'm gonna let that sit for five minutes, rinse, and then uh, leave-in conditioner and then some styling. Okay guys, so we're going to towel block well i'm gonna towel block well i'm gonna get another towel here because that one was good and wet so i'm towel blotting now after we've rinsed out all the neutralizer towel blot it well still make sure that you're very careful with how you handle the hair because what you don't want to do is ruffle the hair up after you've created these beautiful curl pattern and the reason why I'm towel blotting and getting most of that water out is because I'm gonna add some product, okay? So what I'm actually gonna go in with is a leave-in conditioner. I'm gonna use a couple of different products here. I hate to give y'all a combination of products, but these things work really well when I do um, these types of things. This, this For this, for a perm, it just works and it just it just does well, okay? I can't really explain it. But I want to make sure that you guys can see this beautiful curl pattern. It is so pretty. So I'm actually going to be using Malibu leave-in conditioner. If you don't know nothing about Malibu, baby, I need you to get your life together. Because Malibu um, is a great leave-in conditioner. It has protein in it as well as humectants. So it's going to make sure that the hair stays um, moisturized. It's going to reduce frizz. And it's also gonna add proteins and things like that back to the hair. And we know that proteins are building blocks of our hair strands. So we wanna make sure we keep them strong and healthy after doing such a um, strenuous product. Um, because again, we permed it. So we broke bonds and we built bonds back up. So that perm solution, it can be kinda of harsh. So we wanna make sure that we build the hair strands back up. So we're just gonna spray a little bit of leave-in conditioner in. And then I'm going to add another product, which you guys may have seen, excuse me, you guys may have seen me use it before. It's, this product is called We Want Ease by The Do. And it's a texture tamer, okay? So it's gonna make the curls stay defined. It's also gonna moisturize Listen, if you don't know anything about curly hair at this point, know that it needs a lot of moisture, okay? So I'm just gonna add just a little bit of product. Not a lot, you don't need a lot of it. What I like to do 
is kind of like put it through my fingers. So as I scrunch the hair and put it through the hair, it kind of gets in evenly, okay? So I'm just going to just kind of scrunch it in just like that. You don't have to do a whole lot with it. Just want to make sure that it gets in the hair strands pretty good. Just like that. All right, and then I'm gonna follow behind with one more thing. And you guys are probably like, dang, you gonna put three products in this hair? Yes, I am. I'm gonna go in with Mazzani's Miracle Milk. This is one of my favorite products. I actually used it on my other video with, I think it was, um, I can't remember. <laughs> oh, I cut a textured uh, wig. I think it was like water wave hair, water wave texture. So it was like a loose wave pattern. That's what it was. So yeah, this is like just one of my favorite products. And again, it's going to bring a nice moisture balance. Anything with the name milk, I always want to use in curly hair. So it's kind of just like reminds you of moisture. Okay. So now I'm going to take my large tooth comb. Now be careful. Don't do a whole lot of tussling in this hair because we just took it through a strenuous process and we wanna make sure that these curls are nice and locked in, okay? It normally takes 24 hours for your hair to stabilize and that goes for weave too because it's still natural hair, okay? So it's gonna take 24 hours to really stabilize. So I just wanna kinda of just go through and just curl, comb through just a little bit, not a lot. And I'm also gonna use my kind of like my fingers as well at the same time and just kind of bring all my curls together. That way once it dries, the curls won't be um, super separated. They'll kind of just, you know, blend together. So that's what you want to do, especially just right there in that front area. Don't do a whole lot of combing. I, I probably wouldn't mess too much in the back just a little bit and that's good enough and i'm gonna kind of bring this hair to the side just a little bit so i'm gonna use a smaller tooth comb just to kind of define this area to pull this area back off the face because i know that my client likes to wear her hair back off the face so i just want to kind of get it in a position to where it will set now if you wanted to use gel or something like that you could but I'm not going to. I'm just going to kind of just comb it back a little bit. I'm not even going to put a part in it because she doesn't wear a part all the time. She wants a part, she can add her own part. But for the most part, I know she's going to wear this just like this. So, because I know that, just going to kind of comb it in the direction of how I know she's going to wear it. All right, guys. That is it. Look at how beautiful, look at how pretty that is. We just changed this wig's whole texture from super loose wave to a nice curl pattern. Isn't that just beautiful? Look at those curls popping, bam, bam, bam. Beautiful. So with that being said guys, make sure if you like the videos that I'm bringing you, I'm, I plan to educate you guys a lot on wigs and give you guys all these different hacks on how I do things when it comes to wigs. And as you can see, I have some sitting over here, but I'm going to come back with you guys, try to as much as I possibly can, give you as much education as I can on wigs. I'm going to be talking to you guys about all these products that I have over here on this shelf that you can't see all of, but those are some of my favorite products and I'm telling you guys, there's nothing like learning from somebody who actually does this for a living. Like I make wigs for a living for my clients. Some of my clients don't have hair. Some of my clients have hair. But at the end of the day, I've been doing this for a very long time. Matter of fact, since like 2010. So yeah, I'm a veteran. I call myself a veteran in the game because a lot of people just started doing wigs. And I've been doing this for a long time. And I'm a licensed cosmetologist. So it's nothing like learning from somebody who is a professional. So guys, make sure that you click 
the links below with all the information on where to find the products. Make sure you guys subscribe, hit that notification bell. So when I upload a new video, you guys will get that, in, uh, that information. And if you guys want to contact me, all my inf information is going to be below. I'm telling you guys, I cannot talk today. And I'm not editing this out of the video because I need y'all to understand I'm a real person. And we all make mistakes. Nobody is perfect. So make sure you guys stay connected with me. All my information is below. Check me out on the Retail Boss Podcast on all podcasting platforms. If you guys want to contact me, my email is kina at retailbossbiz.com. And you guys can also check out any of my products on my website at www.retailbossbiz.com. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you guys soon.